Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are talking about a heterogeneous hematologic disease which is characterized by proliferation of immature lymphoid cells or you can say malignancy of B or T lymphoblast in bone marrow, peripheral blood and other organs. That is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Acute leukemias are characterized by greater than 20% blast in peripheral blood smear or on the bone marrow. Among all, 75 to 80% of childhood leukemia is of acute lymphoblastic leukemia type, making it the most common form of childhood leukemia, although ALL can also occur in older individuals. The etiology of ALL is unknown. Some environmental and genetic factors may be responsible for occurrence. Environmental factors are exposure to benzene, ionizing radiation or previous exposure to chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Genomic studies have noted that somatic polymorphic variants of ARD5B, IKZF1 and CDKN2A are associated with increased risk of ALL. Other rare germline mutations in PAX5, ETV6 and particularly P53 can also strongly predispose to the development of leukemia. I will describe molecular and genetics in the detail in another video. Symptoms Patients typically present with the symptoms related to anemia, thrombocytopenia and neutropenia due to replacement of bone marrow with the tumor. Anemia causes fatigue, thrombocytopenia causes easy or spontaneous bruising and bleeding and neutropenia leads to infection. B symptoms such as fever, night sweat, unintentional weight loss are also present. Hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, lymphadenopathy can be seen in up to half of adults on presentation. CNS involvement is common and can be accompanied by cranial neuropathies or symptoms related to increased intracranial pressure. Pathophysiology ALL is thought to occur after damage to DNA which causes lymphoid cells to undergo uncontrolled growth and spread throughout the body. Splenomegaly and hepatomegaly occur due to sequestration of platelets and abnormal lymphocytes in spleen and liver. Separation of lymphoblastic leukemia and lymphomas based on the measurement of disease burden or stage. Case with tissue involvement and a replacement of less than 25% of bone marrow involvement by lymphoid blast we can classify that case into lymphoblastic lymphoma. In cases with more than or equal to 25% bone marrow involvement by blast, we can classify them into lymphoblastic leukemia. ALL is broadly classified into two types, BLL and PLL. We are mainly discussing about BLL in this video. Now let's learn something about the diagnosis of ALL. The initial workup for patients with ALL should include thorough medical history, physical examination, laboratory findings and imaging studies. Laboratory studies should include CBC with WBC count, differential and platelet count. CBC may show anemia, granulocytopenia, thrombocytopenia and peripheral blasts. Bone marrow examinations can reveal blasts. What are blasts? They are the proliferation of typically small to medium sized primitive cells either B cell or T cell precursors but they are morphologically indistinguishable. Histochemical studies include staining for terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase TDT which is a positive in cell of lymphoid origin. Detection of specific immunophenotypic markers such as CD3, CD19, CD20, CD22, they are essential for classifying the acute leukemia. In addition to this investigations, blood chemistry profile, liver function test, DIC panel such as D-dimer, fibrinogen, prothrombin time, APTT and a tumor lysis syndrome panel such as 
serum ldh uric acid potassium phosphate and calcium are necessary investigation other recommended tests include hepatitis b c hiv detection and cme antibody evaluations female patient should undergo pregnancy testing and all male patient should be evaluated for testicular involvement of the disease including scrotal ultrasound a testicular involvement is especially common in cases of tall imaging studies include chest x rays ct scans chest x ray is useful in patients with pulmonary complaints ct scans of neck chest abdomen and pelvis with intravenous contrast are recommended as indicated by symptoms and if any extra medullary involvement is suspected pet ct may be considered for diagnosis and follow up now let's learn in detail about immunophenotyping certain markers such as CD forty five, CD twenty, CD nineteen, CD twenty two, CD seventy nine, CD thirty four, CD thirty eight, and TGT. These all are important for diagnosis of BLL. CD forty five. Most BLL cases expresses low level of CD forty five, that is moderate to dim, and which can be negative in some cases. The cytoplasmic expression of CD seventy nine confirms the B cell lineage. CD20 it is a B lymphocytic specific membrane protein which plays a role in B cell development differentiation and activation so it is mostly expressed in intermediate and late stage B cell precursors in 40 to 50% of BLL cases show CD20 expression which is often dim and variable CD19 is a diagnostic marker of for BLL and is present in greater than 90% of all cases. CD22 is inhibitory B cell co-receptor which is positive in more than 90% of BLL. Expression of CD34, CD38 and TDT indicates immaturity. The phenotype of blast is independent prognostic marker. BLL is subdivided into pro BLL, common ALL, pre BLL, and mature BLL. Let's learn how to differentiate these all from each other. So first, we should run the panel of BLL and TLL. If we find CD nineteen, twenty two, and forty five positive, then go for CD twenty and CD seventy nine A. If CD twenty is negative and CD seventy nine A is positive, then go for TDT, CD thirty four, CD thirty eight, CD forty three. If all are positive, then check for CD ten. If CD ten is negative, then it is early pre B L L, or we can say it is a pro B L L. If CD ten is positive along with TDT thirty four, thirty eight, and forty three, then check for cytoplasmic I G M antibody. positivity if it is negative then we can classify this leukemia as common bll and if cytoplasmic igm antibody is positive along with cd10 then it is classified into pre bll if cd20 is positive cd10 is also positive and there is a surface immunoglobulin m is positive along with negative tdt and negative cd34 it suggests maturity of cells so it suggests mature b all this is another pictures which clarifies the same concept this is the classification of who in the fifth edition it is b all classification and tll classification the bll is classified into bll nos with high hyperploidy with hypoploidy with i amp 21 with bcr abl1 fusion with bcr abl1 like features with kmt 2a rearrangement with etv6 runx1 fusion with etv6 runx1 like features with tcf3 pbx1 fusion with igh il3 fusion with tcf3 hlf fusion 
and with other defined genetic abnormalities. We will discuss this molecular and genetic classification in another video. The TLL is classified into TLL not otherwise specified and early T precursors acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. Treatment Treatment of ALL comprises three phases remission induction, consolidation and maintenance. These all phases last for around 2 to 2.5 years. Induction therapy consists of three drugs or four drugs. Those are glucocorticoid, vincristine, asparaginase and fourth is anthracycline. These all are administered over 4 to 6 weeks induce complete remission in approximately 98% of pediatric patients. The goal of induction treatment is complete remission. The complete remission is defined as less than 5% blast in bone marrow with an absolute neutrophil count more than 1000 per microliter, a platelet count more than 1 lakh per microliter and no need for blood transfusion. Induction with 3 or 4 drug regimen is followed by consolidation which is done by cyclophosphamide, cytarabine and mercaptopurin. Methotrexate is a crucial for controlling systemic leukemia and also CNS and testicular disease. Maintenance therapy typically lasts more than one year and consists of daily mercaptopurin and weekly methotrexate with or without vincristine and steroid pulses. Targeted immunotherapy drugs that are available for treatment of relapsed or refractory ALL. Stain cell transplantation including re-induction chemotherapy or immunotherapy offers the greatest hope for long-term remission or cure if HLA matched sibling is available. The supportive care may include transfusions and antimicrobials. Antimicrobials are necessary because patients are immunosuppressed. Febrile patient with neutrophil count less than 500 per microliter should begin a treatment with broad spectrum bactericidal antibiotic that is effective against gram positive and gram negative organisms such as ceftazidim, piperacillin, tazobactam and meropenem. Empirical antifungal therapy should be given if antibacterial therapy is not effective within 72 hours. Hydration and urine alkalinization is important which is done with IV sodium bicarbonate and allopurinol or resburicase. They can prevent and treat hyperuricemia, hyperphosphatemia, hypocalcemia and hyperkalemia which arises due to tumor lysis syndrome. And last is psychological support. Monitoring and follow. Early response to therapy is an independent prognostic factor in pediatric BLL. The response to induction treatment has been categorized based on lymphoblast count in bone marrow. If blast count is less than 5% then category is M1. If blast percentage is 5 to 25 percent then category is M2 and if after the induction treatment the blast percentage is more than 25 percent then category is M3. Complete remission is defined as M1 bone marrow at the end of induction, absence of leukemic blast in peripheral blood, CSF and no evidence of local disease. MRD which is minimal residual disease or measurable residual disease refers to the presence of small number of malignant cells in leukemia patient during or after the treatment. MRD is under the detection limit of morphology and is usually detected by flow cytometry and or molecular methods. MRD is the strongest independent predictor of relapse and survival outcome. This is in short about acute lymphoblastic leukemia. We will discuss molecular and genetics in detail in upcoming video and these are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.